going on and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on my 1967 C10 here behind me. We've got a lot of things we need to button up before we can finally break in the big block Chevy. So this truck has been sitting pretty much my entire life, a little over 30 years, and David and his dad both built this 454. It's 30 over, Lunati camshaft, all that good stuff, but it is a flat type of camshaft, so we are going to have to fire this thing up and break it in. Now I have since pulled everything apart, intake and everything, put some assembly lube and some high zinc stuff on the camshaft itself just to give it just a little bit more of a possibility of making it. One of the first things I'm going to do before we get too deep into the logistics of actually getting everything ready for the engine, I'm going to slip this header off right here on the passenger side and I'm going to go ahead and drill it for an AFR gauge so once we do get this thing fired up, broke in, we'll be able to hook an AFR gauge up and help tune this thing in. So I've currently just got this thing kind of in mock-up mode. That's pretty dang tight there. <laughs> so I've just got two bolts on these headers holding them in place right now. So we're just going to back them out real quick. And hopefully slide this thing up and out of the frame. So I was initially going to just drill in here and put the uh, O2 bung in the actual header itself, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and put this chunk on here. That way it goes downstream just a little bit more, and we can put it right in here, and we can just kind of manipulate this thing a little bit better than this big header. Then we can stick this straight on here and weld her up. Let's get this piece prepped up and ready to weld. try to keep chips and stuff like this swept up because Layla, my puppy dog, she likes to hang out out here too. Alrighty, it's not perfect but I do have a little bit of practice and I need to be doing on the TIG welder but nonetheless it is ready to rock. Let's uh, see if we can't slap that thing back down in here real quick. All right, I did uh, slather a little bit of anisease on that bung before I slipped her in there, just to make my life a little easier in the future, hopefully. Also make my life easier probably and jack this thing up, but who has time for that? That's a beautiful thing. I've got some actual header bolts on the way. This is a spread bore intake, so I've got an adapter to go from spread bore to square bore because we will probably not be running a spread bore and maybe not even this intake at all. I would like to maybe after we get this thing broke in to source some kind of a tunnel ram or something. I think that'd just be really cool. And maybe even have carburetors coming out of the hoods. <laughs> You let me know. The hood on this thing is not pristine by any means, so it's not going to hurt my feelings. If we cut a hole in it. I think a big gasser style scoop would be kind of cool on this thing, but I don't know. We shall see. But I'm just taking all this tape off currently, so we can start installing 
that spread bore adapter. I think for now, just for the break-in, I'm going to take the uh, carburetor off my dually actually because I know, I mean, it's pretty much built for a 454, or it's running a 454 big block right now, so I think it'll be pretty dialed in for this engine. I mean, this engine might want a little bit more fuel, might want a little bit more air, I don't know, but I think it'll be definitely close enough to get us breaking this engine in. And that's pretty critical. Once you fire these up, you want to get them up to RPM so you can get the oil in that camshaft and break it in. Just using some WD-40 on here to kind of rub around on the rest of this sticky stuff from that tape residue. Well, that intake cleans up pretty nice, actually. I don't know, heck, maybe we'll keep this on here. <laughs> Grab our gasket. So one thing I do not like, right off the bat, with this spread bore kit here, is it's from Edelbrock, and they send you the screws to fasten this plate down and their Phillips head. I don't know why in the world they wouldn't have made it an Allen or something along those lines, but they sure didn't. I think we'll want it like that. But it is a nice plate though. I've got other ones off of Amazon and stuff like that. And they're not nearly as nice as that one. Seems like it's got a good flow to it. A nice little flow pattern and everything. So I just grabbed a number three screwdriver bit here for my 3 8 ratchet and that's what I'm going to install this with instead of just trying to use a regular screwdriver and then it just comes with these little studs here looks like the fine thread end is going to go down maybe that's okay so the fine thread end is going to be left up and the coarse thread goes down. Just going ahead and installing all this, even though we might not even be putting a carburetor on it right now. I just don't want to lose any of this stuff, and it's a lot easier just keeping it right here. Next thing I can do that I've got laying around is kind of start getting this distributor ready to go in. It's a unit that I bought from O'Reilly's on the way back from Southeastern Truck Nationals and basically just robbed the little condenser out of it so it's a full distributor so we're gonna opt to throw that down in the big block for now I've got a ready to run MSD that we might hook up later on but just for break-in purposes the HEI doesn't get more much simpler so I'm just gonna toss that thing in there break this thing in for sure with the HEI and if it runs good I'll probably never change it in all honesty. Get a little ranch here so that little condenser is what I just robbed out of the other distributor. I'm gonna attempt to toss it into this new unit here. Alrighty so we've got the module replaced and then this little capacitor here so last thing to do toss the rotor on and then we can throw her in the big block behind you. Before I pull my little prime tool out of there that I had in there the other day just to prime everything up, it does make decent oil pressure so crank it up real quick. but you can see it was creeping up on 50 right there which is pretty good that thing was maybe spending I don't know a thousand rpm so right about where it's gonna be idling so looks good to me but let's get this thing pulled out and let's get that distributor placed in there and timed hopefully
Alright, this should be pretty close to zero degrees on top dead center there. Anytime I ever do that, whenever I set a distributor, because there is that oil pump shaft in there, and people probably are going to tell me I'm completely wrong in doing this, and that's fine. But what I'll do is that oil pump shaft, sometimes the distributor doesn't set all the way down, but it will mesh up with your camshaft gear. But I'll just hold a little bit of pressure on there, and then you can just rotate your engine just a little bit and it'll stay engaged with your camshaft gear which is what keeps your engine in time but in doing that whenever you're pressing down it'll just kind of keep coming around until it'll finally line up with that oil pump groove and slide the rest of the way down so if i back this up we should be pretty dang close to lined up still where we want to be yep so it's pretty much dead up right there at number one we can definitely play with it from there and hopefully get this thing pretty dang close to where it's gonna be to pop off and all that good stuff need to find me a hold down somewhere and then the distributor is pretty much in we do have a bunch of plugs to acquire for this intake because it has all the different accessory holes <laughs> So we need to figure that one out too. Since we had the rockers off and everything, we are gonna have to readjust valves on this thing and I am by no means an expert. I actually just watched a video today. I'll drop it down below. It's uh, Vice Grip Garage. Very early on he did a video and it simplified this thing. Essentially you just go down through here. You find the ones that are loose. I'll tighten them up rotate it 90 degrees and I'll keep doing that until I get them all snugged up and then after that I'll just go in he said between a half and a three quarter on each and every one of them tightening that and he said nine times out of ten it's perfect and you can do that on any engine so that's going to be my game plan going forward I'm just going to go down through here tighten these units up rotate it a little bit Tighten again, then we'll be good to go hopefully, and then that'll be just one more thing we can check off our list. Also, when tightening these, you want to kind of move back and forth with that push rod and make sure you don't over tighten it to the point to where you can't turn that anymore because that is going to be a little excessive on what you're doing. Like I said, some of these I've taken all the way off, so they're very loose. And if yours is close, you're probably not going to have to tighten as much as I am right now. I'm just going to do this side, and I'm going to rotate about 90 degrees here. See, that one's a little loose. And it would be a little easier to do this without your intake on because some of these push rods are kind of hard to get to when they're up in here like this to kind of get that feel for what they need. And one more rotation, we'll see if we're pretty close. All right. So these all feel pretty close now. So now that I've got these all adjusted pretty close to zero lash, what I was told to do now is go either half to three quarter of a turn. I'm probably gonna go probably half on these. We'll see how that goes.
Alrighty, so this side of the head should be done. I can move over there and you can do this all all in one motion, this same thing. But I just decided to do it all right here. So I'm gonna do this passenger side real quick and I'll see you here in a little bit. All right, now that we got our valves all adjusted, I'm gonna start filling up some of these holes in this intake. It's got, like I was saying, a ton of water jacket ports in this thing. And this is gonna be like a I guess vacuum or something port right here so just trying to thread this thing down in here that way we don't have any issues arising I'm gonna have to order up some more fittings here for the other ones I don't have any half inch ports I just have the 3 8 so I need to order up four of those so we can get them plugged off real quick I think outside of that, I think we're looking pretty good on the intake. Need to order up a thermostat and a thermostat housing as well. Man, we're getting pretty dang close. Then we're going to be utilizing the carburetor off of the old dually. So that'll go on here, which that's actually the carburetor that came with this engine. It was brand new in the box. So that'll be good. And then hopefully we'll be getting our alternator stuff. Then I can get somebody out here, help me get the front end on this thing. So this truck came with the little mechanical gauge set. Um, it's already got the oil line hooked up. I actually robbed water gauge. So I used that on the dually whenever I first got it going because I couldn't figure out my gauge. So we've since fixed that. So put this unit back on here. That way we can kind of keep track of all the vitals when we do pop this thing off finally. That's the last thing we want is to run out of oil pressure or something like that or for this thing to get way too hot we'll be able to keep track of it. I'm just going to kind of have this thing sitting up on the firewall for now. That way when we're out here watching it and making sure we don't have any leaks and stuff we can just kind of keep track of the vitals as well. So this bushing is going to be too big for this. And the other one is too small. So maybe we'll just go up here for now. I like it. Oh my. And take this. And it'll go right directly in there. Alrighty, that should be good on there. A little oil fitting here. It's the plastic line, which I'm not a big fan of, but like I said, most of this stuff's gonna be kind of temporary for break-in purposes, so I don't plan on leaving all this on here for now. Alright, I'm gonna uh, Go ahead and put this Power Master Mini on here. This one is kind of crappy. Uh, the Bendix doesn't want to kick out every single time, but it's one I've got laying around. So in a money saving fashion, we'll go ahead and toss her on there for right now. And then we can change her out later on, but I think we're breaking this thing in. Should be a-okay. Oh, there it goes. That'll definitely help out. <laughs> Maybe it'll work good now. Probably not, though. The drum brakes are at least free on both sides of this thing. That one sounds bad. Get a creeper. I've got this thing turned to where it worked on my small block Chevy. So we'll have to see if it's gonna work here. Might have to clock this thing. Oh my ass, 
filled with dirt and dust. All right, we're gonna have to clock this up to make that work. All right, so the nice thing about these Power Masters is you can take these back plates here off and pretty much clock them any orientation that you want. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Whenever I had these on my small block on my 64C10 over there, I clock this to get it away from the header because it was really close and it's not working out with the long tube style headers I got on this engine. So pop these things out. Or like this. I think we're gonna wanna go like that. Just have that thing straight up and down. Like that. They come with a little spacer right here. I took that off because it didn't seem like it wanted to engage all the way as it should have on my small block. So I'm just gonna put it back on there for the big block Chevy. There's a little spacer they come with from the factory. Like I said, I took it off for my small block, but since we're going back to the big block, I'm gonna slide her on here. Ah, got a bug dancing in my eye right now and Layla's eating something in the corner. Oh, it's all went bad. Later. Over here. Beautiful. Oh, come on. All right. Let's go for round two under the truck once again. Goodness. The old headers. I'm glad this is a mini starter. Jesus, Pete. <laughs> oh my lord. Oh. Yeah, these headers are no joke on uh, pretty much any clearance that you have down here. I'm not a big fan of long tube headers. For this reason, I just get in the way of everything. Well, that's good to know. I'm glad I crawled under here. This thing doesn't have any torque converter bolts in it. <laughs> uh, but the torque converter does have fluid. Oh man. So we'll add that to our list of putting some torque converter bolts on this unit. That would have been a not so good sound probably whenever we were trying to break this thing in. Oh my lord. <laughs> I think we really got her going our direction now though. Really wish I would have coughed up the money and put a stall converter in this while I had the motor and transmission out. But we can do that in the future. It's not the end of the world to pull a turbo 400 out. And plus it doesn't look like it'd be very bad at all in this truck, honestly. That'll probably be an upgrade we do in the near future as money allows. So at the end of the day, what do you have your money on? This 468 big block or my 383? Cause that is one of my things I'd like to do is line these two trucks up and see which one's gonna be the quicker of the two obviously i've never heard this big block run so it's hard for me to say but a little small block runs pretty dang good so i'm excited to see though we'll line these things up and see what we can get going well unfortunately it has been about three or four weeks since we've touched this thing last got the old 58 apache known as the blue goose and we just had a lot of things come up so this thing's been on the back burner once again, but today we're diving right back into it. And I've got my pulley set up and everything here. So let's start by just throwing that thing on here, getting it all buttoned up. Start things off by hopefully getting our alternator on here. It's all brand new. I just went ahead and 
bit the bullet and bought everything brand spanking new so we're not chasing parts around and everything but I stayed on the cheap still I wanted to get a power master but just didn't pull the trigger just a GMC or GM one wire alternator just like I'm running on my 64 and then I hopped over to Amazon and ordered a bracket kit here let's see if I can figure this thing out real quick and we can get this thing mocked up and then I've got a pretty cool pulley setup that I'm excited to show you we'll install right after we get that yeah this cheap little Amazon kit that I ordered didn't have any instructions in it so that's kind of a bummer so I'm just gonna try to get this thing kind of mocked up loosely and see if we got what we need Cut them things down a little bit. Yeah. All these bolts are like over, way over long. Like, that thing. Spacer seems right, but it just seems like this bolt is way too long. Should be something like that, so we've got that kind of mocked up. Alright, I gotta get this old lower pulley off real quick. And it'll make room for our other one here we got, hopefully. I don't know if our pulley kit came with a bolt set or not. I hope it did, that would be really cool. So our next kit is by Assault Racing Products. Um, it's actually a belt drive but it's kind of like a blower style I've seen these things around and I've always wanted to run one so we're doing it now so it's gonna be like a big fat blower style belt instead of like a v-belt or a serpentine belt moment of truth I think it's gonna work out hopefully fingers crossed on that I guess this is a long water pump and maybe I ordered for a short I'm not sure man that really stinks let me do some Google and see if I can figure out what the heck the lower pulley we need is. I've been tinkering a little bit off camera here and it uh, looks like this thing's going to work out. Um, these don't line up perfect, but even if this is at the very end of this, I think it's going to work out okay. I don't know if they're meant to line up exactly right. This is for the long water pump, the kit that I bought, so I don't. they don't sell another kit to make this stick out any further. So. I'm just going to go with what we got. Um, I do need to get this V-belt style fitting off of this really quick and we need to put our new one on here like that. Just worked off a 16 hour night shift this morning so my head's a little foggy <laughs> to say the least. Also ran up town real quick, got us some plugs and plug wires and also a thermostat. So we'll be able to install all that and then I'd like to maybe get the front fenders and stuff on this unit. Give her a little tap tappy I guess. I don't know if my wrench setup's going to work now though. Let's see if we can slide this belt on here now. So something like that is what we got. That's pretty dang cool. It looks like a little mini blower setup. I think that's pretty neat. I need to probably get these two bolts cut a little shorter because like I was saying in the beginning they are a little long. And I think this one's actually a little long as well. I don't think it'll tighten down anymore either. Need to shorten all three of these bolts and then I think we can tighten this thing up. Should be good on our belt drive. I'm pretty happy with that. I think it'll work out great, actually. I've never uh, 
mess with one of these belts like this. I've always seen them, so I'm kind of excited to see how that'll do. Got all the wires ran now, so now just need to start kind of tying some of this stuff back. And by that, I just mean I'm going to zip tie it together and kind of daisy chain it all together. That way, we don't have a bunch of stuff interfering with everything. But yeah, I think we're about time to put our front clip on here so we can start assembling like our radiator and stuff like that so we know. Because I still need to, I don't know if I'm going to try to do a mechanical fan on this for break-in. And then maybe swap to electrics later. I don't really know. So I need to get that front clip on here to see exactly how much space we have between our radiator and our actual water pump setup. Alright, so you can see here, this is what I'm talking about when I was just kind of going to zip tie these together. It just kind of spreads them out and kind of keeps them all organized. And you can kind of flow them away from your headers. It's maybe not the show car way to do it, but it really, it's not that bad. Like you can see these, I don't have them flipped over just so you can see what I had. But these, I kind of flipped them over there and it's pretty smooth little look really. It ain't terrible. That's how I do mine most of the time, but it keeps everything away from the headers. I went with the straight boots on these and they actually worked out perfect. I was kind of worried if I did like a 90 degree boot it would be too close to the header. Yeah, everything's routed pretty nice. Now I gotta try to get that front clip over here. Um, I took it off by myself. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it back on by myself though. It was a pretty good job just getting that thing off. So we'll run over here behind me on the other side and see if we can't mess with that a little bit. Alrighty. I'm going to have to turn into basically like a human hermit crab and uh, shoot this thing out that way. It's not terribly heavy, but it's just an awkward lift. See those comments about that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to move this thing around real quick, and I'm gonna set it down. That way we can hopefully get this hood off. And that'll make it just a little bit lighter, so it'll be a little bit more manageable once we go to put it on the truck. sense of having it on there when we're going to be breaking this thing in. It'll be nothing more than just in our way. That's exactly why I built patina trucks. Because it is not nearly as critical.
Alrighty, now that we've got that resting on here, we can kind of see what we got going on with this radiator. And it is an old school AFCO racing radiator. And apparently, David mentioned that this radiator was actually like a prototype radiator for the 67, the 72s that AFCO actually used. Nonetheless, there she is. It looks like it's going to fit. It's a big aluminum radiator. It looks like we might even have enough room to get that mechanical fan in here. So it looks like for now, just for the break-in period, we could run this mechanical clutch fan here. Looks like it's going to clear everything, which would be sweet. And then later on, we could always come back and put us like a dual electric fan setup on it, kind of like what I've got on my 64. That would be the ideal move. Now, I don't know if this is the exact radiator that's supposed to go in this truck or the one that I slammed down in my dually because I got two radiators with this truck and both of them were from AFCO. Now, I don't know if this is the one that's supposed to go in it or the other one. But, since we got this one and it seems to fit in here, this is the one we will be running in this truck. Now we just gotta try to find some top mounts and hopefully get our fans set up. Alright, I was digging around at our parts. We got a radiator cap here. Looks to be a decent one. Snip that on there and then I did find the two radiator hold downs, which... This one will work out, but I'm not sure about this one here. Like this doesn't really quite want to go. Maybe we'll go this way. That one doesn't seem to want to be working. We've got this one on there for now. So for break in, that'll be fine. We definitely probably need to address that because neither one of these act like they really want to sit on there. Maybe we can come back with just a singular one here and kind of modify it a little bit just for one hold down and I think that would be perfect. Alright, so we are getting dangerously close to starting this thing up. I just kind of started pulling some of this wire up, just kind of seeing what we had and trying to declutter that firewall just a little bit because it was kind of overwhelming with all that stuff just kind of draped up over top of that. but. As you can tell, we got plenty of fan clearance here, and I think that'll be perfect for breaking this thing in. I do like the thought of having electric fans because in traffic or anything like that, this thing idles. I mean, it might end up on Hot Rod Power Tour, a drag week, or something like that. Who knows where it's going to end up. Did toss the bumper on this, and then our headlight trim rings, but I'm pretty dang stoked on the progress of the 67. I think this is a killer looking truck and I just love the stance. I think it could stand to come down just a little bit more in the back, maybe like a little two inch or one inch drop shackle in the back to get it just a little bit further down. It's actually got some cut coil springs up front so we might trade them things out for some actual drop coils just so we got a little bit better spring rate and it's not gonna be so bottomed out. But I'm absolutely pooped. I worked 16 hours last night and just got off and pretty much been going nonstop ever since then. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you consider subscribing and liking this video if you did so. But we're getting dangerously close to the 67. Let me know what you'd like to see done to this truck. I think it's just a cool old muscle truck. I think it's gonna be sweet. And I can't wait to hear that big block fire up for the first time. So I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one and get out and work on your projects. And I'll see you later.